Good morning, dear friends. What a joy for us to be together again for just a few minutes of a meditation, meditating on God's Word. And greetings to all of you. And I hope you had a wonderful weekend and Sunday. And also, this is a brand new day for us to live and glorify the Lord. Today's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 30, uh, chapter 14, verses 33 to 38. And let me read it for you. 33. Uh, I will read from verse 32. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, uh, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. In verse 33, how terribly our Lord felt the burden of a sin as he was made a curse on behalf of the entire human race. The guilt of the whole humanity fell upon him as he prayed, as he is entering the last moments of his, his, his battle. Just think about it for a moment. He had a human will. What did he do with that will? As he entered into the last moments of this, uh, his, uh, his battle, the, the, the cup that was given to him by God the Father was so uh, bitter, so terrible. Even the Son of God could not bear it. He had a human will. It was that human will that was crying out now, Father, if possible, remove this cup. But then immediately he changed. He said, nevertheless, this is not my will, Lord, my Father. Your will be accomplished in my life. You know, very often I think, what would have happened if he had finished that prayer, closed that prayer with the first sentence? Father, remove this cup from me. But thanks be to God, we all can be grateful to God for His amazing grace, which, uh, which, which, which prompted Him to pray the next sentence, Father, it is not my will, but Your will be done. And what was the will of the Father for Him? It was the cross. Never forget that. And He, he joyfully accepted Father's will. He surrendered his human will to the Father's will. And that is true surrender, my friends. We all have our desires and our will, especially. What are we doing with our will? We choose our own ways. We choose our own uh, works. And we choose our own ministries at times. Instead of seeking God to lead you and me into the ministry that he has in mind whether it is children's ministry or women's ministry or uh, youth ministry or teaching ministry, whatever it may be, or pastoral ministry, evangelist ministry. We have the choices and uh, we don't make our own choices, but we must seek the Lord and he will let us know what his will concerning us is. And I hope that we understand that message. And he prayed, Father, if possible, remove this cup from me. Was he referring to his physical agony, exhaustion, 
and uh, mental agony and uh, physical agony and suffering? Uh, not so. I don't think so. Was he, um, or, or thought of painful death on the cross? Or was he afraid, of, afraid to die? No. He came for the purpose of dying, so that, that, that thought of death could not have been the reason. Jesus, the Son of God, who knew no sin, and the only thing he was never familiar with, or experienced was he was never guilty. He was never guilty of anything. But what was this cup? And, and suddenly in that garden he was made sin for us and the awful wrath of God came heavily upon him as he began to feel the burden of guilt of billions of souls. And that guilt he himself was never separated from God the Father. And that curse of guilt due to human sin was placed upon him on behalf of the entire human community, human race. And that made him to be separated from God the Father and that was the pain that he could not take it. Never for a moment whether he was in heaven or here on earth, he was separated from God the Father. Every day he had a consultation with his Father as he went to prayer. He listened to God and he saw God the Father working. And this, these were the, uh, the words that he spoke to the crowd and these were the works that he, he has done for the people. And in that supreme moment, when he found that, that, that sinless must considered guilty, so that the guilty people can go free, you and I. Think about it, my friends. And this causing his heavenly father's withdrawal from him. And that was the cup that was too bitter for him. And in the eternal coexistence with his father, he never for a moment knew separation from his father. Suddenly, Jesus found himself separated due to being made a sin and a curse for man's sin. And despite of all his courageous preparation, his infinitely pure nature found it utterly horrible to feel the curse of guilt. This shocked him. See the sinfulness of a sin, my friends, from which he has set you and I free through his death. He shrank back when he saw that he must become loathsome in the sight of heaven. Because of the abominable thing God hated, sin and its curse now laid on Christ. And God the Father could not look upon that heap and that huge mountain of sin and guilt of the entire human race. There were two things he, uh, he desired at that moment. Divine fellowship and a human fellowship. 
and my friends both were denied to him for your sake and my sake. Father silent and the disciples all ran away. What a, what a sorrowful condition. In the midst of such sorrow and agony, Jesus, uh, the, 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 no divine fellowship, God the Father turned his face away from him and no human fellowship either. The people whom he trusted the most and to, to whom he was going to give his work to be carried out in the world again after he is gone. None of them were there with him at that time. Jesus taught us in the importance of a prayer in time of trouble. And when did he teach us? In the midst of his agony and sorrow. He taught us the importance of prayer. His soul was exceeding sorrowful, it says. What did he do then? He prayed. In the, in, the, uh, in the hour of distress, we find him employing this great remedy. Go to God in prayer. The first person we must turn to in our trouble is God. And may the Holy Spirit keep reminding us. We have a tendency when suddenly something happened unexpectedly, we immediately think of so many other ways. Call ambulance or call somebody, go to some counselor, go, go here and there. But remember, whatever the problem you are facing, the agony, the affliction, remember to talk it to the Lord first. We sing that beautiful song. It is, it is a good song to sing. But let it not remain only as a song in your mouth. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sorrows and sin bear to bear. Let it not, let that song become a real a prayer. As far as you and I are concerned in our times of need. It, it, the, 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 the reply may not be given immediately. The relief we want may not be granted at once when we pray. In fact, the thing that afflicts us may not be removed or taken away. In Jesus' case, the cup was not removed from him. He was made to drink it, but was comforted and strengthened by the angels. You know, in our affliction, we may not see God suddenly answering our prayer or removing the problems from our lives, but in so many other ways, you will find God is ministering to you. And that is a wonderful and marvelous thing, truth, my friends. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, uh, that, that verse gives us the clue why Jesus went all the way in enduring the unthinkable and and indescribable suffering. Because there it says, he saw a joy, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. What was that joy he saw? The church. Hallelujah. His spiritual bride and his body. Living and reigning with him forever and ever. 
that was the joy he saw through the eyes of faith. And he endured the cross. And he suffered the shame of the cross. This is the incentive and the motivation for us to remain faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our Redeemer. Do you have a joy to look forward to? I tell you, we have a marvelous and wonderful joy and a hope of attaining that joy as given us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. What is it? Beyond this life, when we reach there, when we see him, we shall be like him. For what? And then he will take us that we may be with him wherever he is forever and ever. And what are we going to gain? And we will be reigning, ruling with him. Hallelujah. Forever and ever as kings. Serving under the king of kings and lord of lords. There is no greater joy than that to think that there is a life beyond this life. And this life is a full of sorrow, full of pain and afflictions and trials and difficulties and storms. But that life, everything is over. There is nothing but joy and happiness and complete and perfect health and understanding and wisdom. Hallelujah. And then beholding the face of Jesus Christ, we shall be changed into his own likeness. And thus we shall live with him and then reign with him. Can anyone give a greater joy than this? No. Think of what God has prepared for us. For the life to live with him forever. And rejoice. And remain faithful to him. No matter what the trials and difficulties of this present life may be. It is only a fleeting moment compared to eternity that we have. The Lord bless you. As you pursue this life and serve him and be faithful and loyal to him forever. And thus bring glory to his name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. This is a great day. Enjoy this day by his grace and in his presence. Amen.